Welcome back everyone. My name is Lena and you've tuned in to another segment of The Crockett Way. Now in this particular video, I want to discuss my own personal experience in inducing my labor at home naturally using Midwise Brew. Never try any home remedies to induce your labor without the support of a healthcare provider. Inducing your labor too early could pose a risk to both mommy and baby. I am not a doctor or a midwife. I am just a person recounting my experience with midwives brew. Midwives brew is a castor oil based drink said to induce labor. Midwives Brew is an all-natural concoction of food items and a laxative, namely castor oil, which is the likely component to induce labor. The items needed for the Midwives Brew are two tablespoons of almond butter, two tablespoons of castor oil, eight ounces of lemon verbena tea brewed, and 10 ounces of apricot juice. These items should be mixed smoothly with a blender. Because castor oil's most common use is a laxative, which can cause minor spasms in the intestines, it can also cause spasming of the uterine muscles, which in turn can lead to contractions and induce labor in some women. In my opinion, it didn't taste awful. I didn't really taste the castor oil until about halfway through the drink. There are differing opinions. Others think it tastes absolutely horrible. It's said that drinking over ice can improve the taste, but it's also said that if you drink it warm or at room temperature, it's said to be more effective. It's said that the other ingredients are used to improve taste. No research suggests that they aid in labor induction. The ingredients can be mixed by hand, but it will require time consuming and vigorous mixing. The use of a compact size blender like a Ninja or a Nutribullet is recommended or any other automatic food blender. It is recommended that midwives brew not be consumed until full term or at the very end of the 37th week of pregnancy. So nice of you to join us. I had to go to several stores to find all of the ingredients I needed. I even had to go online to find one of the ingredients. Finding all the ingredients needed for the midwife's brew was not the easiest thing to do. I didn't have any difficulty finding the castor oil or the almond butter. I got both of those from a Walmart super center, but I had to go to Amazon and purchase the lemon verbena tea. I also had to go to a neighborhood Walmart to find the apricot nectar. Now, if you can't find the exact ingredients needed, it's not a problem. There are other alternatives. Some women use mango nectar in place of the apricot nectar, and some women use the Tezo Zen green tea in place of the tea that I purchased on Amazon. I decided to try midwife's brew when I was 38 weeks and three days pregnant suffering from intense pelvic pain and pressure. I had difficulty breathing. I found it extremely difficult to sleep. And just like most women, I was ready to meet my baby. The first 
first thing you want to do is assemble all of your ingredients in one place. Then you want to brew the tea. If you're using the Tezo Zen Green Tea, you can use up to two or three of the filter bags. If you're using a loose leaf verbena tea, you can use up to two tablespoons of the tea. Now, the important thing is you want to make sure that the tea steeps for at least 10 minutes. After that, you want to place two tablespoons of the almond butter in a blender, then add two tablespoons of the castor oil, then add 10 ounces of the apricot nectar or mango nectar, whichever you have, and then go ahead and add eight ounces of the lemon verbena tea. You want to make sure that it's blended well and smooth. Once the mixture is blended smoothly, go ahead and pour it into a glass. You'll have 10 to 15 minutes to drink all of the mixture. I started drinking the mixture at about 6.24 p.m. and I finished it at about 6.34 p.m. I found that drinking it over ice made it a little bit more tolerable to drink. Within an hour, I began noticing some rumbling in my stomach, almost that feeling that you get right before you have to use the restroom. I began feeling contractions. They were very mild in nature, but I definitely felt them. I decided to take a walk, so I went out and walked for about 30 minutes. As I walked, I noticed that the contractions got more and more intense and a lot closer together. Four hours after drinking the midwife's brew, I went to bed, still feeling contractions, but they were tolerable and I was able to speak through them. So they weren't really that bad. At this point, the contractions were about 15 minutes apart and they lasted about 30 seconds. About 12 a.m. the next morning, I woke up to a contraction. They were closer together, more frequent, and a lot more intense. I was still able to speak through them, so they were still very tolerable. About nine hours after taking the midwife's brew, about 3.30 in the morning, I woke up feeling like I needed to use the restroom. I went to the restroom still experiencing contractions that were still very tolerable. I used the restroom and after wiping, I noticed that I had passed my mucus plug. The contractions continued throughout the night and morning and about 8 a.m. I told my husband that there was a possibility that we may need to go to the hospital. At about 11.30 a.m., my contractions were five minutes apart, lasting about 60 to 90 seconds long. So we gathered all of our things that we had packed for the hospital, jumped in the car, dropped the kids off, and took the hour-long drive to the hospital. Once I got there, they took me into triage right away and into my room. By this time, the contractions were so intense that I had difficulty speaking through them. Once the nurse came in, she took my vitals, she asked me to change, and then she checked me. At this point, I was four centimeters dilated and the nurse could feel the baby's head. As a matter of fact, she told me that my baby girl has a lot of hair. She wasn't very sure if that's what she was feeling, so she went and asked the doctor to come in. So the doctor came in and checked me and she said the exact same thing. So they decided to go ahead and get me ready for my scheduled C-section. And the reason for my scheduled C-section was because I had three prior C-sections and the doctor had explained to me the risks that were involved if I decided to have the baby vaginally. So we decided to go ahead and plan for another C-section. So at 4.18 p.m. on August the 24th, almost 22 hours after taking the midwife's brew, I gave birth to our little girl, Aviana. Yes, midwife's brew really works. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let us know how you felt about the video and if it was helpful at all. Don't forget to hit the notification bell just so that you can stay up to date on every video that we post. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye.